started. So good afternoon and welcome to AMDC's In Conversation with webinar series. So my name is Charmaine Phillips. For those that haven't joined one of these before, and I'm the director here in the Northern Territory for AMGC. So thank you for taking the time out of your day to join in on our conversation. And if you didn't get the prompt, I'll just let you know that today's session is being recorded. So if you have to jump out, you can always come back and um, have a look at it. So I'd firstly like to begin our conversation with an acknowledgement to country. So in the spirit of reconciliation, AMGC acknowledges the traditional custodians of country throughout Australia and their connections to land, sea and community. So we repay our respects today from Larrakia land up here on the north to all elders past, present and emerging. And that extends and extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people joining us today from whichever land you're on. So for those who may be joining us online, who joined Tuesday's webinar with Arm Hub CEO and founder Corey Stewart, I trust you got some value out of the information that was shared. I personally could have kept talking about what Arm Hub does for hours. So I'm excited to have Kevin Hernan, Director of Defence at Arm Hub, which is the Advanced Robotics for Manufacturing Hub, here with me today to talk more. Welcome, Kevin. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. So welcome. So today's conversation, it's only going to take about 20 minutes. I'd really like to keep in that half an hour mark and I've allowed some time at the end for um, answers to any questions. So please use the chat function. As always, you'll be on mute. So just send them through. Um, but let's just jump straight in. Hey, Kevin. G'day. All right. So I guess for those who weren't able to join us on Tuesday for our conversation with Corey, could you start by giving a brief overview of the Arm Hub and its purpose? Yep, no worries. Um, so we the Arm Hub stands for Advanced Robotics for Manufacturing. Um, it's a, it's established in uh, in Queensland. Um, it's a national it's a national entity like a research institute, I'd say. Um, it's government funded. Um, and its main mission is to basically to well to help um, companies and manufacturers grow, basically grow um, through using industry 4.0, industry 5.0 technologies, um, and the application of things like uh, robotics, for example. Um, you think of robotics, um, it's more than just um, robots. Um, the integration of robotics into manufacturing companies is a lot more complex than that. So you're talking about uh, vision systems. Uh, artificial intelligence systems, um, software, hardware development to actually integrate um, the, the robotics into, into uh, companies to help manufacture. Um, so what do we do? Um, so we've been around just over three years now. Um, we've helped out um, dozens and dozens and I think up to hundreds of companies. Um, we provide a whole lot of different um, support for, for Australian companies. Um, like we offer a workshop series about how to actually, in detailed workshop series about how to use um, robotics, uh, AI and software systems into the company to help basically advance and scale up the manufacturing. Um, we hold on-site visits um, where we work through the company's um, challenges and problems and look for opportunities to improve it. Um, we also um, offer memberships and advice as part of that, that um, solution. Um, we also help identify with companies, I can help identify with companies possible grants um, or contracts that they could win that they might not be aware of about across the whole of Australia because lots of states um, and federal governments are offering ways to advance and help um, companies and, and, you know, with their manufacturing. Um, what else? Uh, we do, uh, we work a lot. So uh, one of our core strengths or a differentiation, a different point really, um, compared to to anyone else in Australia, is um, uh, we we have connections and tiebacks into um, I think it's every Queensland university and a, a lot of Australian universities um, yeah. where we we the sort of like the middle uh, the middle area to basically facilitate um, and integrate R and D into into the companies. Um, yeah. So yeah, so we both not just do the R and D for both. Uh, manufacturing aspects, but also enhancing um, their new products as well. So it's a bit of a difference that we do. Uh, we're not not for profit, yeah. As well, so we're uh, we're not like a uh, a consultancy company as such. Uh, our, our whole mission is to to basically improve the productivity and advance manufacturing for for Australian companies. That's that's why we exist. Um, that's cool. That's why we're that's why we're here. <laughs> 
Yeah, um, and I guess that's yeah. what that's the exciting part about you sitting in that R and D space. You're just a, a prime um, participant as a collaboration partner potentially for the grant that we have up here in um, Darwin. Oh, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, you have to tell me about that afterwards because I will. <laughs> just, I'll yeah, let everyone know. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, because I've just got, I've literally this is my first meeting since uh, coming back on five uh, five weeks leave. So um, oh. the last yeah, the last uh, yeah last four or five weeks in Europe. So, but anyway, um, different. So what uh, what else do we do? Um, we also um, work on developing contracts with companies to win contracts, um, and also help deliver the those contracts too in both like in product development and also mainly about scale up manufacturing. Um, so I, I'm 20 years. Um, in tech development um, in the defence sector, um, and um, the 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 big thing is, it, as we've seen, it's it's um, there's no point just having uh, the technologies to defend ourselves, but what is critical is we need to manufacture them, um, and most of the time we actually need to manufacture them with speed, and that's becoming really critical um, at the moment. So uh, we've seen that in um, uh, the conflict uh, with Ukraine. And Russia yeah. at the moment, so um, yeah, and a lot of warfare is kind of changing. Which I'll probably do you want me to go on to the strategic review? Probably a good time. Um, yeah, absolutely. If those that are on the line haven't or have haven't read of or are aware of the defence strategic review, can you just summarise? Because I know it was fairly in depth. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, for anyone that works in the defence sector, and I assume that um, you've signed up for this series. Um, to, to help out, I suggest you read the um, Defence Strategic Review from 2023. Um, it's it, The version is only 112 pages long. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, well, it depends on your background. Um, there's a whole heap of recommendations in there. Um, so basically the, the summary is it was, so we had due to the, the, well, the review's recommendations, due to the, um, the current, strategic environment they call um, where we talked about um, we're looking at potentially could we could be in conflict um, within a certain time frame three to five years I think they were talking about it was a lot shorter than 10 years which is what they were saying previously in the 2020 review was um, so they've come up with a whole different recommendations about what um, what capabilities we need to develop um, in the to, to, to potentially Know, protect ourselves if uh, if conflict arises. So, um, so that's what the strategic review is about, and looking to um, looking to um, focus in different areas um, of what what, yeah, what where we need to grow. And part of that is, for example, um, the air missile defence systems, um, the little warfare for for navy, for example. Um, and they've got a whole heap of recommendations. So it's very very top level. Um, the strategic review. Um, it doesn't go into great detail, uh, as you can imagine, because a lot of that's confidential, and there is a confidential version, <laughs> uh, which they're of keeping course. pretty close hold. Um, but uh, co complementary to the strategic review, they also have um, uh, the recommendations on not just what we need to buy, how we need to buy it, but also how we're set up. Um, mm -hmm. So they're talking about um, reorganising um, how we're structured as well, how the defence force is structured. Um, so it goes into that and how we also procure things. Um, so along with the review, they're also looking to change the Defence Act. I'm sure many of your, many of the people here are aware of that. Um, that was, uh, it wasn't advertised widely, but um, yeah, they're looking to change the Defence Act um, to make sure that we can actually um, buy things uh, quicker. And um, so that looks looking at, looking at, um, yeah, the procurement processes that are in place. Yeah. So, does that help? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does. Um, if not, that is, I guess, a public document, so people can go and access that and have a read of the 112 pages. Um, so defence is a critical sector for Australia and Australian manufacturers. I know there's been a, lot, a big, a, a heavy focus of it, especially up here in the north. Um, especially to onshore that sovereign capability either through manufacturing or supply chain. So it's really starting to build that capability in Australia. Can you take us through how um, Hub is fast-tracking businesses into that defence supply chain or how you're supporting them? Yep, no problems. Um, so first up, um, 
like I talked about before, how we, how we actually do that. So how we're actually actioning the growth of, of the companies is, yeah, I talked about the workshop series, um, the visits, uh, the grants and development, the grants and tenders are developing and actually delivering with them. Um, how we actually, yeah, so that's all helping Australian companies um, fast track their manufacturing. Um, the other thing we do is um, referrals and connections as well, because we don't want to duplicate what's already out there. Um, yeah. So uh, what is out there is we've got the Office of Defence Industry Support. Um, mm -hmm. So we obviously connect into them. So they're the they're the first the first um, first door you knock onto if you haven't worked with defence before. Yeah. Um, the other, yeah, so that there we obviously recommend that um, that companies speak to them first, and they'll work through. Um, their query, they've got a whole bunch of questions to work through. We've actually, we've actually got a tool. It's called um, uh, Getting Ready for Business uh, Getting Ready Tool. Um, yeah. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> Defence Ready, I think. Defence yeah. Readiness Tool, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, my holiday, my, uh, my holiday brain's still there. So. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, no, they're absolutely brilliant people. They're spread across the whole nation. So you've probably worked with the NT team. Yep. Um, there's also the export team as well. So if you're looking to export um, in defence in particular, but um, more broadly, there is a there's an export team as well um, for the federal government to help export as well. Um, so we provide that advice. Um, and with my 20 years experience, I've been working with um, the, these teams um, at all the workshop series and all the defence events um, over the past 20 years. So. Um, we basically help do the connections. Um, yeah. And, yeah, and I so. think that's key, knowing that all these organisations that are nationally and around can help support that access into defence, because it is yeah. very tricky for, um, I guess, suppliers and manufacturers in Australia. So um, I'll just touch on today's event, the description um, I got was help industry with speed to deliver to warfighters' hands, which was really interesting. So, can you talk about how companies are using advanced manufacturing technologies to deliver products into the hands of warfighters quickly, and some of the real examples of how this is happening? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, the first one, I'll first want to go through is, um, so like I talked about, we the whole purpose is to to help grow and scale up manufacturing for for Australian companies. Um, and how we do that is integration of industry 4.0, 5.0 tech, um, like talk about vision systems, software systems, uh, robotics. So the first one is a company, a Queensland based company called EM Solutions. Um, so they've got a um, absolutely brilliant company. Um, so we, uh, they won um, a few contracts to the R&D development contracts. I'm sure if you, you people are aware, but um, there's the Defence Innovation Hub um, which is where I'm from originally. Um, it was a billion dollar program to fund Australian companies, um, the technologies of defence, um, defence technologies. Um, and they won a couple of these contracts. And in doing that, they developed a SATCOM terminal. So a big 2.2 metre new, uh, best in the world, uh, SATCOM terminal. So um, it was a four and a half year contract. Um, and three years into that contract, they won a, they won a, a, um, a massive order with four NATO countries um, to export uh, for these. I think it was over $50 million. I'm not sure what it's at now, um, but at the time it was that. So um, currently they, and also with so Australia two months ago, have just placed, I don't know how much that was worth. It's around anywhere between $180 to $200 million order as well um, to produce these SATCOM terminals. Um, now these terminals are new for them. Um, so basically, we're looking to work with them to develop how to actually um, scale up manufacturing um, for those things, and we're looking at using robotics to do that. Um, so currently, we're working with them to um, yeah produce a, a robot to actually do that. So that's that's a practical example of how we're doing that. But it's more than just a robot; it's the integration of hardware, software, um, vision systems um, to actually do that. Um, so because with the production of um, these terminals, they connect to three different types of satellites. So there is a lot of cables involved. Yeah. Um, so we're calling it a cable robot <laughs> um, for quality control and manufacture. Um, so I'm not sure, I can't see everyone online, but we might have a, one of the staff members online. So if you are, shout out to EAM Solutions, they're brilliant. Um, 
Another example is um, BAE. So we, they're doing the shipbuilding in South Australia. Um, so we're looking to do um, using robotics to help build the ships as well. Right. So, we, yeah, we're working with a contract with them to actually look at um, – So and it's R&D because we bring in, like I said, we bring in the universities, the same with the EM Solutions SATCOM terminals, satellite communication terminals. We're looking to bring in um, sometimes um, the university staff along with those projects um, to bring the, the, the latest and greatest thinking um, to the projects as well. So. And I guess you touched on um, just then that quality control. So quality and I guess the efficiencies to deliver into events is quite sh strict. Um, so I guess that's why a lot of businesses look towards that robotic, cobotic kind of solution is to ensure that quality control is like top notch. Yes, exactly. Exactly right. So there's, a you know, we, we want to make sure when, when our personnel have have our systems that they work. Um, so quality control is, is absolutely critical. Um, also speed, um, speed in manufacturing is critical um, as well. So using the, the, the standard systems and um, production facilities where it's, it's quite straightforward, um, yeah. we look to automate those. So um, their quality, um, speed, um, testing is, is really critical as well. Um, so making sure all the systems test and they work properly. Um, and it, there's there's so much more. I'm, I'm not, yeah, so I'm not, uh, yeah, there's so much more to it. So, and we've got a local team um, that work with us, a team of engineers that um, that are experts. And then we draw out to um, across, I think it's about up to about 80 um, university researchers that we can pull into our teams as well. So across Australia. And um, the facility there in Queensland, the the hub, so yep. that I guess can be used as a bit of a, a test bed to um, play out some of these processes and procedures and um, efficiencies that are developed. Yes, yeah, you've been talking to Corey. <laughs> <laughs> I told you Tuesday. I just could have yeah. kept talking all day. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it's um it's fantastic. Yeah, so that that's that's uh, yeah that's a test bed as you talked about. So whereas local companies or companies, and they don't have to be local, um, can you know can can lease out a space, uh, engineering teams there, um, and also the, the universities, um, it's university staff coming out as in and out of there as well, working on the projects. Um, so yeah, so it, the good the advantage is obviously is um, we don't have to tie up space. The company doesn't have to tie up space in in their current uh, manufacturing facility. Um, we've also that's for existing companies. Um, we've helped out a lot of startup companies as well. So where before they get the lease space, they can actually work within our factory to actually develop the tech. Mm -hmm. um, and prove the tech um, before then. We've had heaps of camp examples of that where um, they develop the product um, in partnership with us um, and then um, they've then leased facilities um, and gone out to their own and they're quite successful. So, um, yeah, the, 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 yeah, we call it the, the learning factory. Um, and uh, no, it's a it's a brilliant it's a very very special place to be honest. Um, yeah, I haven't haven't been in, in quite you know, a facility like that. Or, um, yeah, it's yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I guess the reason why I um, touch on that, your, your BAEs and your EM Solutions are quite large companies. So for the Northern Territory companies that we've got online, um, I appreciate that we don't always have the tech and the the space here to play around in that R&D space with a lot of robotics. So being able to lease a space short term or long term or however long the project is through Arm Hub, it's really quite um, a value add that you're offering there. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, we and we the space goes down to literally it can go down to 20 square metres as well. So yeah. it's yeah, you're not outlaying a lot of money um, as well. So it's um, especially for startups where it's critical. Mm. So um, and we're there that we're, we're there on hand to for advice and support as well. So, yeah, it, it works. It, it really works. So, yeah. So I know you've touched on two examples already, but I would like to ask, is there a project in the defence sector that you've worked on or that Arm Hub has supported that has stood out? And if you could talk about it, um, can you tell us a little bit more about this and how it was supported? Um, so the, so the, State defence project. Um, we do have one, but yeah, I can't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, yeah, I won't go into it online here. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, um, yeah, so, yeah, it's all good. So Maybe the, just generally some of the um, um, yeah, capabilities so, that okay, you've so been inquired so, about for the Yeah, defense. so what we're looking to do, so we're focusing on um, uh, energy transition is yep. one of our key areas. So with defence right. at the moment is um, it, we're very reliant on diesel. And we've seen in previous wars, 40% uh, of the conflicts and casualty is actually caused from um, logistics, logistics um, um, attacks. Um, and part yeah. of the logistics attacks, most of that is actually fuel um, and supply lines for fuel. So energy transition is, is quite critical. And, and it's, it goes really well with um, what we're doing um, nationally anyway, energy, anyway with, with energy and energy transition. So um, that's one of our core areas we're focusing on, the key, key areas we're focusing on. Another one is um, obviously logistics support um, in the defence sector um, is another one. Um, and automation of logistics um, yeah. is critical. So um, that's another key area that we're focusing on um, is the logistics and the automation of that and looking for ways to use um, robotic and automation systems to, to basically, you know, to take the human out of the loop, um, essentially. Um, yeah. And that's Sorry. great that you touch on those particular areas because I guess it's that perception out there that manufacturing has to be that, you know, that tangible outcome. Advanced manufacturing is, you know, the automation, the AI, the, the data gathering, the efficiencies. So um, it's great that you're getting those kind of inquiries coming through in that sector. And yeah, especially with the energy efficiency. Um, I mean, we just built or manufactured, I think 11 big fuel tanks here for the US Defence Force, so. Yes, yeah, I saw yeah. that. Yes. Yeah. So are they all finished now? Uh, nearly, yeah, close, yeah. 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 Yeah, and they, that was all done pre um, defense strategic review as well. It was. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I noticed there's. Uh, I think the minister talks about it, how much investment's happening up there over the next four years. Is it? Um, how much is it? In, is it the three billion over the next oh, four years? I think in the, NT. It's in the billions. Yeah, I think it was three or four yeah. billion. I can't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. So. It's a. But, it's um, a big. It's a big number, and I guess this is why I wanted to invite you here today so um, our manufacturers can at least get to see who you are and have you as that point of contact if they are looking to really expand into that defence sector because it will be, I think, a good 10 to 15 years of investment here in the Territory. Um, I'm just mindful yep. of the time. Again, I could keep speaking to you for hours. <laughs> Um, yep, but finally, before we open up to any questions, do you have any advice for those businesses currently working in defence sector that haven't yet looked at doing things differently or looked at automation? Um, yeah, so obviously if they haven't, obviously read the defence strategic review um, is one, one key thing. Check out our site. Um, obviously talk to the Office of Defence Industry Support is a key one. Um, work with you. Um, go to events. I think is is a key one. Um, so there is a defence uh, networking group up there. Um, there's also um, Aiden as well. Um, yep. I've heard of that. So a lot of industry networking events. Um, go to go to things like um, Indo Pacific. Um, depending on which area you're working, whether it's Army, Navy, or Air Force. Yep. Um, yeah. There's lots of different. So defence try really hard to work with companies in industry to. Um, to actually educate and inform about what their requirements are. And, and it is quite hard. It, it is hard for them. Yeah. Um, and, but they do, yeah, there's a good opportunity through different forums um, and different events like the Land Working Group Forum, which was held um, a few months ago, but uh, Indo-Pacific um, coming up is, is another event. We're representing at that. Um, we've got a workshop series there as well, but um, certainly that that's where, um, you know, literally you have, a big stand and you've got um, all the defence Navy personnel there and they're, they're willing to answer questions and, and basically you're there to help. They're there to help you try to work with your companies. So that's that's a big suggestion I'd, I'd recommend. In any construction companies that are based in NT, yep. oh, <laughs> there's a massive opportunity at the moment for all the um, the base upgrades. Yep. Um, so I'd get onto that. Um, but uh, any advanced manufacturing and looking to scale at manufacturing, um, I'm happy to share. We've got a... Um, 
uh, we've got a slide on it, uh, a flyer that we're happy to share that after this um, that, you, that, that yep. the companies can follow us up with. So we're here to help. No, that'll be great. And yeah, defence is just one of those sectors where you have to be out there and in the face and really um, get the the word out on what you do and what your capability is here. I know that we've got many support areas up here and just having that, I guess, consolidation of who's who and how you can access, being able to tap into Arm Hub and I guess the networks that you've got as well would be quite of, of value to our, our businesses. So yeah. Um, I'll just check to see if uh, any of our attendees have any questions. I haven't seen any come through, uh, not yet. So I'm just going to give you a minute or two to get any questions through before we um, check out. Is there anything finally you'd like to add, Kevin, that you think would be of value to our NT manufacturers about Arm Hub and Defence and how how they can engage? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I was excited about the questions. <laughs> I like questions. Um, what would I ask if I was if I was them? Um, we have only got two minutes left, don't we? Um, close enough. Yeah, close enough too. Um, so, how to work with defence? Um, we kind of cover that. Office of Defence Industry Support. Um, how to do scale up manufacturing? That's pretty key at the moment. Um, also, the other thing you could probably talk about is ASCA. Advance okay. is the $3 billion um, advanced um, strategic capabilities accelerator developed. Um, it was released just after the um, strategic review. Yep. Um, so if there's companies looking to develop new technologies um, for defence, that's an opportunity there. So yeah. they've put one RFT out yet, uh, one so far, and they're looking, I expect, um, uh, later this year or next year to put out a whole heap of um, calls or, um, for specific targeted capability developments and specific areas. So um, I think um, for those people that don't know, that's led through Defense, uh, Defense Science and Technology Group. Yeah. Oh, um, Michael, uh, which reference? Uh, the ASCA. Oh, the ASCA one. So that's ASCA, Advanced Strategic Capabilities. And um, I would jump onto um, the website and look for that, Advanced Strategic Capabilities Accelerator. And that's headed up through the Defence Science and Technology Group. It's yeah, but Defence is, I guess, very innovative and it just hand in hands with um, advanced manufacturing technologies and Industry 4, 5, we're nearly in Industry 5 <laughs> technologies. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, if you're... I guess as a manufacturer, if you are looking into defence, you really have to look at adopting those Industry 4 technologies, take those small steps, use facilities or operations like the Arm Hub to get that into your process. So then once Industry 5 hits us, you know, you've got the, the robotics and the integration there between um, humans and cobots. So it will be a lot easier then to transition. So... I guess I haven't got any other questions through, which is fine. I will share um, your details later with the group. So let me finish by thanking you very much for coming along and everyone for making it at a lunchtime. Um, this session was recorded along with Tuesday, so both of them will be up on the website hopefully by tomorrow. So if you did miss any of it, go back and have a look. But as always, if you'd like any more information on the Arm Hub, website is armhub.com.au. Uh, so there is some defence information up there, but again, I'll share Kevin's. And thank you, Kevin, and thank you, everyone, for attending. Have a great rest of the day. Awesome. Thanks, Charmaine.